YouTube. Today we're going to take a little bit of a quick look at the latest release of Fedora. Uh, so Fedora 36, currently in beta mode, so it's actually not uh, officially available until the uh, the 19th of, of April. So that's about 20 days or about three weeks or so away. But uh, having said that, let's just take a little bit of a quick look and see what's going on. Now, uh, let's just change between some of the workspaces here and we can see we've got the Fedora 36 going on there. Now, the default desktop environment is indeed the, uh, the the GNOME desktop environment, as we can see here. So we've got our little activities menu. Uh, we've got our apps and options here. In fact, this is the latest release of GNOME. Uh, well, one of the latest releases is 42. So really, really bleeding edges, which is really what uh, Fedora likes to do. So it is actually the, uh, probably good to note, the upstream of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So the Linux used uh, very much in the commercial and enterprise environments there. But uh, yeah, it is, uh, you could say, the more bleeding edge version of it. Yeah, they get a lot of um, uh, newer packages much sooner, of course, than Red Hat Enterprise Linux, to say the least. Now, uh, they do say that uh, with this latest release here as well, is that uh, it's actually got some performance improvements there as well. I really hope that's the case, because with every new release of Fedora, it's got a bigger version of GNOME, and we'll look at the RAM specs in just a moment. Uh, we can see the kernel is actually, I've never seen a kernel uh, uh, this later and greater, which is pretty consistent with how Fedora likes to operate. So it is running on the 5.17 kernel, which is really, really good to see there. And uh, let's see if we can maybe have a little bit of a, just a little bit of a peruse around, see if anything's super interesting here. This looks mostly the same in, in my opinion there. We would probably want to look at the, the files, otherwise uh, known as GNOME files or Nautilus, so version 42 as well, version in quite consistent with the, uh, the GNOME version there, and they have actually given it a little bit of a change, a little bit of an update there. You can see how it just decides to look here, nothing to really ever write home about, but hey, you can right click and open terminal, that usually makes me pretty happy there. There is a few extra little features here and there. If we were to go into settings, we'll uh, see this really maybe slightly more dynamic uh, dark mode. So you've got lights and dark versions of things. So at the moment we've got this background. It looks like a, a, a kid's play school background of some description. River, mountain, river, sky, cloud. But uh, we can go to the dark mode and it's actually not only changes the dark mode on these windows here, but also on the the, the background there as well. But um, I wonder if you did that for your own photos, if it were to do the same thing. But either way, it's, it's pretty cool and I pretty much enjoy that there. Let's keep it the dark mode there for now. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, if we were to, now to install anything in the terminal, uh, I don't want to get into this too much, but you would type in the, the DNF command. So, whoop, uh, doing this all backwards, DNF. So, sudo for root privileges, DNF, install, and you know, htop, whatever the program name is, and then away you go. So that's how you do that one there. Now, uh, let's see, oh, there was actually a cool little feature here, which I'll just show you guys. So it's the, the print screen feature. So they've really kind of updated this one. So you just hit the print screen button, and then it allows you to print the screen, the window, uh, oh, that's pretty cool, the window, or a selection. Uh, if we go window or anything like that, we just hit the button. I'm not sure if you heard a cool little camera sound there. That's quite nice as well. Uh, I also actually did enjoy the fact that uh, it seemed to record video there, uh, whether it's a stream, a stream, a window, a screen, or you know the anything else there as well. Actually, I might just open that up. So selection, screen, and window, and there we go. Record or photo. Very, very cool. Okay, last but not least, let's have a little bit of a look at that RAM there, see what's going down. Whoops, yeah, I'm just not a big fan of the gnomes sometimes. Now, here we go. So, CPU, not exactly idling out. Now, gnome is known to be probably one of the, uh, the most resource intensive. Uh, desktop environments, so it's not going to be like KDE Plasma, XFCE, all of those things there, Cinnamon, uh, you name it. Now 1.48, so about 1.5 gigabytes of RAM on boot up. There's nothing really loaded in the background here. In fact, let's just close out anything. You know, the files is closed, all that's closed. So that's a little bit uh, frustrating for me. Now this is beta, so it may not have been yet optimized. I'd really like to see the full release of Fedora 36 to see that we're not running at 1.5 gigabytes of RAM on boot up. I mean, a lot of operating systems do about 500 
or a 0.5 of a gigabyte on boot up. So yeah, I really hoping for the best for GNOME there. Uh, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan if you've been on my channel of, of GNOME, which is quite odd because I do use uh, Ubuntu as my daily driver, which has a like a customized version of GNOME. So it's quite funny, all of that there. But um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, just, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button. And I do hope to see, yeah, all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers, guys.